This is BBC News. I'm Mark Lobel with the latest headlines for viewers in the UK and around the world. The BBC's star football presenter Gary Lineker has been suspended over social media comments he made criticising the British government's asylum policy. As editor-in-chief of the BBC, I think one of our founding principles is impartiality and that's what we're delivering on. Asylum policy was also centre stage at a leaders' summit in Paris, where the UK promises France hundreds of millions of dollars to deal with illegal channel crossings. Missing the warning signs, officials in Germany say police spoke to the suspect in Thursday's Hamburg shooting a month before the attack. And Hollywood's big night is on Sunday at the Oscars. We'll look at who could be taking home the coveted gold statues. Hello and welcome. The BBC is in crisis tonight after forcing its highest paid and most recognised presenter Gary Lineker to step back from fronting its flagship football programme after he criticised the British government's migration policy. The broadcaster said that Lineker, a former England captain, would not present his popular programme Match of the Day until an agreement was reached over his social media use. In a tweet, he'd compared the language used by the UK government to set out its plan to that used by Germany in the 1930s. The BBC said Lineker should keep away from taking sides on party political issues under its impartiality guidelines. Well, pundits and commentators have said they won't take part in the programme in solidarity with Lineker, and some players are thought to want to boycott post-match interviews after the games. BBC staff are expected to remain impartial and not express personal opinions in public. Some defending Gary Lineker have said that as a freelance sports presenter, those rules do not apply to him. Here's our media correspondent, David Silito. <laughs> We've got big games at both Gary Lineker, ends of the for more than 20 years, the face of Match of the Day. But not tomorrow. He's been taken off air by the BBC, and his co-presenters Alan Shearer and Ian Wright won't be appearing either as a mark of solidarity with Gary Lineker. The reason? These tweets in which he described a statement about immigration policy by the Home Secretary as beyond awful, and then went on to say it was immeasurably cruel, and the language used not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 30s. The corporation says this breaks their guidelines on impartiality and in a statement said the BBC has decided that he will step back from presenting Match of the Day until we've got an agreed and clear position on his use of social media. If Gary Lineker breached the guidelines, why didn't you sack him? Well, I think we always look to take proportionate action and that's what we've done. But haven't you just kicked it further down the line? Is on you delaying well, I don't want to add to the statement. I think we've had very constructive discussions. The statement's very clear, and that's where we are. As editor-in-chief of the BBC, I think one of our founding principles is impartiality, and that's what we're delivering on. This is not what Gary Lineker was expecting. Only yesterday he said he wasn't fearing suspension. Do you fear getting suspended? No. And he was looking forward to presenting this weekend. One of those furious with the BBC is Alastair Campbell, who now has a podcast produced by Gary Lineker's production company. I think this decision is driven by an utterly craven political cowardice at the top of the BBC, and that is what has led to Gary Lineker. And this thing about, you know, stepping backwards, let's be absolutely frank about this. Gary, it's been pretty made, made clear to Gary Lineker, I would imagine, he's not going to be presenting Match of the Day because he's not, he's not towing the line. The BBC says it would like to resolve this, but Gary Lineker's given no indication he's going to be silenced. And he's not bound by the strict rules covering news. But there is a clause in the rules saying if you have a high profile, there is an extra responsibility. If you allow the most highly paid presenter on the BBC to breach the guidelines in a way that the BBC says he has, then why should anybody else who's paid less obey the guidelines, and the BBC has to be impartial and perceived to be impartial. And for the BBC, there is another issue hanging over it. It's chairman. There is an ongoing inquiry into Richard Sharp's role in a loan made to Boris Johnson, which has raised many questions about his appointment and impartiality. But this weekend, 
It's all about Gary Lineker, with presenters lining up to say they won't be replacing him. Match of the day will take place tomorrow with no presenters and no pundits. David Silito reporting there. Well, earlier I spoke to our reporter, Sean Dilley, who's been following the developments on social media. He talked me through how divisive it has become. And there will be some headaches within the BBC this evening. The reaction has been swift and explosive, not just on the BBC, all of your news bulletins across all of the broadcasters and content makers, it's topping those stories. On social media, um, the match of the day, Pandit Ian Wright was among the earliest to respond. He wrote, everybody knows what match of the day means to me, but I've told the BBC I won't be doing it tomorrow. Solidarity. Fellow pundit and former player Alan Shearer also tweeted that he wouldn't be attending. Now, a familiar name, Jeremy Clarkson, the former BBC presenter, replied to Ian Wright, simply saying, good on you, mate. Looking at other reaction, The Mirror, the newspaper, an online platform, we should say, uh, have started a petition calling for Gary Lineker's reinstatement. Last time I looked at that, which was about sort of 20 minutes ago, it had sort of nearly 70,000 signatures. Right. So we saw some former players uh, there in support of Gary Lineker. We now understand through BBC Sport that a number of players from various clubs might not actually take part in those post-match match of the day interviews. Mm -hmm. Now, Tim Davey did tell the BBC, not BBC's Nomi Iqbal that a match of the day would continue as normal this weekend. And about an hour or so later, we find out it's anything but that. This raises mm -hmm. big questions about one of the BBC's most watched programmes. It does, but the BBC's been here before and any big organisation does crisis management. Um, I think it was... Uh, Harold Wilson, the former Prime Minister, that used, who used the expression patriarchal, you might say, he said, events, dear boy, events. So, you can, ima you can imagine, can't you, this evening, BBC Sport uh, producers in frantic dialogue, possibly on phone calls, Zoom calls, maybe in-person meetings, who knows, uh, trying to reinvent or at least re sort of adapt and dynamically reform a format that's been very well known to audiences for a long time. Gary Lineker has been presenting since 1999, which is a very long time. Uh, it is a presenter-led and studio programme. It does have pundits, but now it says the BBC, it won't have any of these elements of presenters and pundits. It will focus on action from matches. Now, there's not just a squire in the, the world of sport there. Uh, this is not a pun, Sean. This has turned into political football. Quite literally, you have a clear dividing line between Labour on the one hand and the Conservatives about how they're reacting to this story. Um, what have the politicians been saying? Yeah, this is exactly the uh, position the BBC, according to their charter and position, don't want to be in. Uh, it started on social media with a tweet by a very high-profile BBC presenter describing a cons the Conservative government's policy on asylum as beyond awful and comparing language used uh, with that of Germany in the 1930s. Now, the former Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries, a close ally of former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who we'll speak about a bit later, has been speaking on her talk TV show. People who are paying Gary Lineker's salary of £1.3 million a year are licence fee payers and they do not all agree with Gary Lineker. And I think the BBC, and I don't know whether, whether you agree, has a responsibility to possibly use Gary Lineker as a line in the sand to say to all the others, like the Emily Maitlisses and all the others, that, you know, you can't do this. If you're working for the BBC, you have a responsibility when you're public facing, whether it's your Facebook accounts or your Twitter feeds or whatever, to still retain that element of impartiality. And to really hammer home that point you were making a few minutes ago, Mark, David Lammy, who's a Labour MP, tweeted, chilling to see a great public broadcaster cowering to right-wing fanatics. He said, um, democracy is made of tougher stuff than this. The BBC should get a grip and put at Gary Lineker back on and uh, on MOTD match of the day where he belongs. That's uh, the problem, isn't it, Sean? Mm. That the government are being accused, the BBC is being accused of towing the government's line. Now, they That's say right. they're defending impartiality, but there have been accusations on many broadcasters and from uh, mm. unions and from other people about the double standards here and people turning yeah. to the role of the BBC chairman at the moment. That's right. Um, so there are uh, those questions. Uh, we may hear a bit later from Yvette Cooper as well, but the BBC is a public service broadcaster. It's by design independence of government, but there have been questions about the appointment of the BBC chairman, Richard Sharp. Now, that appointment, that of the chairman, is made by the government of the day, and in Mr Sharp's case, the former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Questions have been asked about an introduction Mr Sharp made 
uh, between Mr Johnson and a man who went on to guarantee a loan for the former Prime Minister. Now, again, this latest impartiality controversy follows a high-profile BBC presenter sharing personal views on a party political uh, policy. Now, this will be a deeply, deeply uncomfortable position for a trust-conscious BBC. Let's step back, step back from all this and look how this could die down. You have, on the one hand, G Gary Lineker, who I, was, I think it was the FIFA Fair Play Award winner, wasn't he? He went 16 years without a yellow or a red card. He's right, seen as a yeah. very fair person. And then you have people like Roger Mosey and other former BBC TV executives who I've spoken to all saying the same thing. They had to do something about this. You have to defend impartiality. Mm. These comments went too far. So how could all of this die down? It's a very good question. I spoke earlier to, to Richard Eyre, the former editorial director uh, of uh, editorial policy at the BBC many years ago, very experienced journalist. He has written publicly uh, about the difficulties that the Director General, Tim Davey, he's a man who has spoken about impartiality um, there. And I put to him the idea that there are people such as Alan Sugar who um, do express political opinions. Now, he's not a uh, journalist, he's not a presenter, but he does often share his views on politics. Another name that may be known to BBC audiences is Andrew Neil, the former political presenter, uh, often in the spotlight for his writings outside of the BBC. And here's what he suggested on the BBC's newscast. My reaction is it's right to sort it out and to agree what the rules of engagement